Gautam, how did the concept of making this film come about? How did you... Beyond the Himalayas? Yeah. Well, it happened so suddenly. In fact, uh, the beginning of 94, I was planning to make a feature film in Bengali. Then Major Alu Ali called me that Gautam, I got the permission for our expedition, which I knew that he was planning to organize. And it took him almost eight to ten years to get the permissions and all that. And then he said that, uh, could you make a film? I said, I don't know. I don't know whether I can make a film or not, but I'm coming. It's so exciting and a rare opportunity to visit Central Asia, China and Tibet. But I was quite skeptical about a film, movie. Because uh, it's very difficult to make a film only in a short trip where you're staying at least most of one or two days in one place, then again traveling. Uh, so I had my doubts. Then I tried to study some books on Central Asia in the Asiatic Society Library, and I found it's fascinating, fascinating area with its history and early expeditions and so on. I told Hari, okay, I can try. Then Doodarshan was uh, very nice, you know, they supported almost without any contract, without any hope for commercial recovery. They funded the film. The initial funding was made by them. And Michael, a friend of mine, who is also a producer in England, uh, he came with a camera and about 70, 80 rolls of film and beta cassettes. And I found a cameraman, Kabir Khan, uh, from Ramesh Sharma's unit. Because, you know, we had a limitation of the crew. We were only four people with two cameras, sound machines, necessary lights and things like that. I told Michael and Harid, look, I'm not sure about the film even now, though uh, we are shooting in the expedition. It might be a recce for a good film. But out of the expedition material, somehow the film came out. So it was an accident. <laughs> What, um, I mean, what are your memorable experiences during the making of this film? Uh, it's, it was, you know, as a filmmaker, it was almost starting from the scratch. Loading your own film, carrying your equipment. Because when you make films, one after another, at one time you become lazy. You have a big unit. So that was, I think, the most fascinating experience as a filmmaker. We were do doing everything ourselves, carrying the load, uh, handling cameras, sound, even driving the jeeps. So it was exciting, very exciting filmmaking altogether. Because always I believe small is beautiful. When you are limited, you become more creative. You create something more indigenous. So uh, what were, I mean, uh, when you set about it, you said that you, was, you were worried about how it will shape up. And things. But as a challenge, I mean, how do you feel about the film as a, as a challenge? You took it upon as a challenge? Well, when I uh, had come back from the expedition and saw the entire footage, I found there are elements. There are very interesting footage. But I need to travel back in time. Otherwise, there's no meaning. It, it becomes a mere reportage or a simple travelogue without any layers, without any background. That's why I started finding archive footage, photographs, studied books and periodicals and then really the film came out the film evolved uh, and uh, there was no script at all except our daily notes about the feeling about the feeling of a place people their culture but the film evolved during the editing stage and I found very interesting materials archive materials from different sources in the India office library in the museum in Sweden Germany, United States. So all this came through and the film is ready now. Um, uh, this, this film, I mean, was part of an expedition. So Very much and part it of an expedition. Can, and it can also be called an adventure film of sorts. Yes. How did you, what was all the logistical planning that went into it? How did you do that? Uh, I thought uh, since we, are, we have a limited time, let's look around with our two units and we had a quick planning in each and every day. Uh, suppose one unit should go to the historical sites, other unit can concentrate on people, on the streets. So it was, the, the planning was there all through, but we are not very sure about the entire shape or structure of the script. So that's why I say it evolved, the whole entire film evolved uh, from our own experience. And it's true that 
uh, say, for instance, about Tibet. About Tibet, uh, what we get, either a biased Western view or from a Chinese official view. But unless you travel through Tibet, it's impossible, with, a, with an open mind, it's impossible to feel about Tibet. We found Tibet is still in contradiction with modernity and the tradition, and it will be like this for many years to come. It's impossible to make a very clear equation about Tibet, uh, which, are, I, which I think it's quite stupid. One has to go there and experience. And you have seen the film, even in the second episode, where there is a Western Buddhist who is trying to trace back the path of Yuen Sang and finally comes to Gaya. But it's again the same Buddhist principle that you must experience things. Nothing is constant in life. So that spirit was there always with us. But we must, we must find out things by ourselves. Of course, you can read, you can study. But when you are in the real place with the real people, things are always different. So now that it's all over and the experience is, has, has you know, got a place in your heart, in your mind, what is it that you think of now? I mean, as in, how, what kind of an impact has it left on your mind? I became more educated through the film. I was not really aware of my neighbors. It's very unfortunate. I was more aware of the continent, of the Western world, even other parts of Asia like Japan, Korea, Vietnam, or other continents like Australia. But it's really unfortunate. We don't know our neighbors just on the other side of the mountain. So I'm much aware of them now. I understand that how we are close, but for this stupid political barrier, we don't know each other. OK. Now we'll come to another subject, which is about documentary filmmaking. What is your attitude towards documentary films? I love documentaries. I started my career as a documentary filmmaker, then I shifted to feature films. But when we started, really, the documentary scene was very tough. There was hardly any sponsorship. Uh, film divisions and some government agencies they used to produce films, that's all. So you, always our hands were tight and limited. That's why we, some of us tried to make independent documentaries. I made Hungry Autumn, then Tapan Bose made Bhagalpur Blinding. So there was a trend of independent filmmakers in the 70s. Uh, Anand made a few films in those times, days. But the situation was very difficult and our only hope was film festivals and some foreign markets. But nowadays, with the advent of television and video, I think things are much better. And why not? Even with a high 8 camera, a lot of people are making films. It's very interesting. Uh, you can't enter with a huge unit or a big 35 camera. What we, we couldn't. But now you can enter, even with a high 8 camera, and make a beautiful film. But the problem is the outlet. I think Indian television and other networks they should provide more time. They should become more serious about documentary outlet. Otherwise, you know, there are many talents will be nipped in the bud. How do you personally handle the schizophrenia of jumping between documentary, feature? Well, nowadays I don't think I'm making a feature or a documentary. I'm making a film. Whether they're enacted with actors or I'm really working with real people. So I call it films because I'm sure that in today's world, it's all mixed up. Even in the fiction film, you find documentary elements. In a document, you find some fiction elements. So these are all mixed up. So it's my own understanding and feeling that sometimes I feel like making a film with a fiction element, with a strong fiction narrative. And sometimes I feel like making a documentary. But again, it all depends on the opportunity. Uh, I'm very selective. Unless I'm inspired, I don't make a film. So even for a documentary or feature, for instance, uh, the last documentary before Beyond the Himalayas, I made on a great man called Bismillah Khan. And I learned a lot from him, what is a real artist, the humility of an artist. That helped me a lot to shape my own ideas and concept about the world and art. Uh, Beyond the Himalayas is, is a great experience. Like that, you know, it depends how I'm inspired or I feel about the subject. Okay. Uh, but 
now that everything is you know instant and fast and things what is the like future of documentary food. exactly <laughs> what do you think is the future of documentary in india i think future is bright because so many young people are making films but only uh, there's a fear because the video and television world as you mentioned is so fast uh, the struggle is less now because you know when we started actually the only thing two things we learned the test first lesson of filmmaking is patience and second it's a battlefield it's not a rose bed that's a problem nowadays that there are a lot of young talents after one or two films very serious good films they carried away because there is so much money all around the struggle is sort of sort of you know it it becomes a little static in that thing that's only fear otherwise things are fine why not there people are making so many films and what are your future projects now at the moment moment again i'm going back to a fiction film i'll be making a film in hindi in the backdrop of bombay bombay in recent days it's about a ventriloquist and his doll it's about the man and his alter ego and the ventriloquist you know is a very shy person but when he performs he completely transcends and he he can speak a lot of things to the through the doll so it's a fusion between the man and the doll at the same time and how in our society the real freedom has been curbed we say that we are really free we have democratic rights and things like that but my performer feels that we are not so in every step there is a trouble there are problem mafias all around uh extremely vulgar people are controlling the administration and power and these elements are there though it's a film about a ventriloquist and a doll what is the cast of your film cast mitun will be playing the ventriloquist uh, his age is about 40 42 the guan christian a musician and a ventriloquist and pran will be playing his guru hamid who comes from lahore the veteran uh, ventriloquist actually who own, used to own the doll who sells it out to his disciples and there's a new girl called uh, nandana devshen she will be playing rosemary uh, another guan girl mohan agash is also doing the role rosemary's father braganza and there's some few other characters so is this film something that one can slot into the commercial film bracket i don't know it's a simply normal film only this film will have some songs because ventriloquist uh, he composes his own songs that's all so that's what i mean But i mean songs in a different genre absolutely uh, even you can see, uh, see the instrumentalist because with, when they are very a small group they have a small little casio a little drum and a guitar so even when you hear the song the accompaniment will be limited only with three three elements uh, instruments but later on when they grow they can hire some other instrument uh, or other musician so you can see everything in the frame it's not just a song for song sake there are few songs there are some parodies for the old numbers But I I shouldn't call it a art film or commercial. It's a normal film of my kind. kind But of film as to. far as marketing is concerned, you think that having some uh, stars from popular cinema in your film will help market the film uh, commercially? Uh, it might. Why not? Because you know these mega stars have some sort of draw or pull. So it might run uh, fast four weeks only for the stars. But I'm not treating the star as a star. He has to play a character. and of course uh, sometimes what happens in after few weeks of run the audience they realize that my star is not doing what i am expected is different here so star value has some meaning for this film but not in a long run anything else that you planning to do uh, along with this a, film uh, or I'm after i'm also this? making a documentary on shafiji ray okay. for ford foundation it will be a comprehensive documentary on ray basically for film students uh universities archives and i'm trying to give a background of ray the 19th century bengal ranasa tagore jagadish bosch how how ray and his family really how they got their education and the grooming of ray 
and of course his films, his writings, his compositions, musical compositions, all together. This will be first of its kind. Of course, uh, Sham made a film on Ray, and there are many other films made on him. Then Ray was alive, and he was very articulate, so it was all uh, interview-based. But this film Ray's no more, and I don't want to use any interview. I want to use that time to explain his films, to explain the different elements he used in his films. So it will be a kind of an academic film on Ray. But I'm very excited because I'm watching his film again and again and finding so many things, so many new elements. And the most beautiful thing that, again, the small is beautiful, because Ray, Shubroto and Bangshi, they worked with a small budget but created best out of it. So money is not the real problem. The problem is your own homework and attitude. But again, I'm learning from Ray. Great. <laughs> It's being said now that uh, the so-called parallel cinema, alternative cinema that had started, the new wave cinema, is dying out because either most people are shifting towards commercial cinema or they've just kind of faded into oblivion. What do you feel, considering you're part of that well, movement? It's very difficult to say for a specific reason, but what I feel that in the 70s or till early 80s, there was a huge middle class audience for these films and they shifted to television for their own convenience. Because why? No point of going to the theater again, transport problem, all these problems. And you have a cinema, all these channels here. You can see, watch movies, you can watch program. So they don't go more anymore to the theaters. So this kind of film lost a huge middle class audience. At the same time, also I should blame our own generation, the filmmakers, from certain kind of complacency. I've made a film, got some award. That's the end of it. But it's very important that you have to keep track with your people. So most of the filmmakers are getting alienated from the masses, which is dangerous. Uh, so it's a two-way traffic, you know. At the same time, you know, we need audience. On the other hand, the filmmakers also give some effort to reach them. But I'm not a pessimist, so still I'm hopeful that this kind of films will come back. Come back uh, with, with its very strong uh, elements, will come back. But how do you feel when you put all the effort into making a film, for instance, Patang? Nobody got to know. People don't know Terrible. Gautam Ghosh made the a film like that. The first time it happened uh, in my career, the film was not released. Because... Uh, One second, Gautam. Me can't do. It happened with Patang. Because all my earlier films were released in Bengal and elsewhere. And they did well. Well means, you know, they recovered money from the box office. And also, in the process, it's very important that unless it is released in the theatres, you don't know your audience, for the reaction of your audience. It's, you really can't judge it in a festival or in a special screening. It's impossible. Or in television. But in the case of Patang, I don't know what happened. My producer is a rich man. Uh, he thought, Ooh, no point of going to the distributors and negotiating with them. Give it to television. I'm very happy. He got some money from foreign market and gave it to television. But very unfortunate, film was drastically edited in television. It had a, a, almost 10 cuts. Because film was given adult certificate and television needs something UA or U, whatever, I don't know. But it was very badly cut. At one point, I switched it off because I couldn't follow my own narrative. So it's very unfortunate in the case of Patan. But personally, I feel that unless I release my films in the theatre, I really don't know what I have done. How do you feel about films just getting shown? So many of your contemporaries, their films just get shown in festivals. That's the end of it. I mean, that means that, you know, it's enough that I've got That's my film shown. That's not enough at all. Even for a filmmaker, it's, it's a cause. Because, you know, you are starting a new film without knowing the result of your earlier film. It's not enough to get some reviews from your friends or in some festivals. It has to be tested with your own audience. I've given a very interesting example from Ray's film. It suddenly came in my mind. Ray made a film called Kanchanjonga in 1962. I think this is one of his masterpieces. 
but kanchenjunga was not accepted by people of bengal in those days because the film was much ahead of its time not even it was accepted well in europe because westerners thought no this is not the genre of ray this is the kind of film antonio should make and kind of thing it was not accepted but the same westerners in recent years they're sh shouting and telling big things about kanchenjunga it is one of the greatest masterpieces ever made in the world they are also strange people you know it's so subjective but ray was not i'm sure he was quite upset there was his first color film without a strong narrative story it's only you know the film is only about few characters roaming around in the mall area of darjeeling and it, the film is about real time so it was an experiment for ray but he never became cynical what he did he made his next film called obijan with a strong story and it was a hit so it's very important that all these important filmmakers they never sort of ignored their audience this audience is most important thanks